given the vapor density of a particular substance, it is possible for us to determine the relative molecular mass of that substance. Now, where this gets even much more interesting is that the knowledge of this relative molecular mass of the substance can help us to determine the molecular formula of that substance and hence to identify the given substance. You are welcome to the GMAT 41's chemistry class. So in this chemistry tutorial, I will be teaching you how we can determine the molecular formula of a given substance through the knowledge of the vapor density of that substance. In part 1 of empirical and molecular formula, we already defined what these formulas are and how we can calculate them if maybe we know the mass of the substances that, okay, the mass of the elements that make up the given compound. And then how we can determine the molecular formula of the substance if we know the relative molecular mass. So welcome to this class. It's going to be an interesting one as usual. For part one of empirical and molecular formula, please click on the info link showing above. And of course, it will take you to the video lesson where I taught the concept of empirical and molecular formula. Here, in what I consider to be part two of this topic, we will be looking at using the knowledge of vapor density to progress to get the molecular formula of a compound. Now, according to Graham's law of diffusion, you recall that rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the square root of the gas density. Now, when further to establish that there is this relationship between the density of the gas and the molecular weight of the gas, there was this direct relationship between them. So using that knowledge, we can actually link the density of a given substance to the relative molecular mass of that substance. And like I said, once we have this knowledge, we can actually determine the molecular formula of the given substance. Please friends, come along with me. Let us make this analysis here on the board. Now, vapor density is equal to 1 over 2 times relative molecular mass of the substance. Now, with this relationship between uh, the vapor density of a given substance and the relative molecular mass of that substance, we can actually obtain the relative molecular mass. Permit me to use RMM for relative molecular mass. And please, vapor density, I'm going to use VD. Are you following, right? Now, if I make relative molecular mass of the substance subject of the formula, to achieve that, I'm going to cross multiply. You know, this formula simply means that vapor density is equal to relative molecular mass over 2. So making RMN subject of the formula, the implication is that relative molecular mass will be equal to 2 times the vapor density of the substance. So you want to take note of this. Let me label this as equation 1A because of course it is the same as equation 1, you know, just cross multiply. Now you are good to go to determine the molecular formula of the given substance. But in this case, you would need to know the empirical formula of that substance so that with that empirical formula and the relative molecular mass, you can now determine the molecular formula of the compound. So you see, it's an interesting one and we are going to see how we can apply this knowledge to determine the molecular formula of a given substance. So let us look at our first question, number one. Now we've got this question, what is the molecular formula of a compound with empirical formula CH2 and vapor density 42? Now carbon, 12, hydrogen 1 of course, the relative atomic mass of the elements. If you look at this question, we are required to determine the molecular formula of an unknown compound but we are given the empirical formula CH2, the vapor density is 42. Very interesting. So I want to take note of that, that vapor density Vd is equal to 42 
And like I explained earlier, with the knowledge of vapor density, we can determine relative molecular mass because we need the relative molecular mass so as to be able to determine the molecular formula. Now, recall that relative molecular mass is equal to 2 times vapor watt density. So with this, we can actually obtain that the relative molecular mass of this compound with this given empirical formula is equal to 2 times 42 and 2 times 42 is going to give us 84. This is the relative molecular mass of this substance. We were given the empirical formula, okay? So take note that empirical formula given is equal to uh, CH2. Now that we know the empirical formula to be CH2 and we have determined the relative molecular mass, so what do we do to get the molecular formula? It's cool. Now we are going to do the empirical formula CH2. So I'm going to say it implies that CH2 times a certain whole number value. Are you getting me right? Which we don't know. We are going to determine that. It's expected to give us the uh, relative molecular mass of that substance. Are you following right? And that will give us the molecular formula. Now what I'm trying to do, there is this unknown value n. It's a whole number. I need to know the value of this whole number. Are you getting me right? Once I know the value of this n, I will use it to multiply the atomicities, the atomicities of this empirical formula here. Like in this case, carbon is one, one atom, you know. I'm going to use it to multiply n, okay? And then hydrogen, the number of atoms is two. I'll use it to multiply n in order to determine the molecular formula. But the question is, do I know the value of n in this case? No. I will have to determine it using this relationship. So what I'm going to do is obtain the relative molecular mass of this empirical formula. And how do I go by that? Expanding this, carbon is one atom here, is going to be one times the relative atomic mass of carbon given to be 12. So we'll have 12 here and then plus, it's going to be uh, two atoms of hydrogen times the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, which of course is one. Now I'm going to multiply this by the unknown value n and equate it to the relative molecular mass obtained, which is 84. Solving this, 1 times 12 is going to give us 12. 2 times 1 is going to give us 2. 12 plus 2 is going to be uh, 14. 14 times n would give us 14n equal to 84. So that our n is going to be 84 divided by 14. So let's see what this is going to be. 84 divided by 14, our n is going to be 6. All right, so our n is going to be 6. Now that I've gotten my n, therefore, molecular formula will now be equal to C. I'm coming to this empirical formula now. It's going to be CH2. We are going to multiply this by n. This is going to give us something like CH2 and then 6 outside. If you open up this, how many atoms of carbon do we have here? 1. So it's going to be 1 times 6, which is going to give us C6. And then H what? How many atoms of hydrogen do we have in the empirical formula? It is 2. Multiply that 2 by 6 and then you get what? 12. This is the molecular formula of the given compound here. And of course, the correct option is option A. So you see how we handle this. Very interesting. As a summary, all you just need to do, once you know the vapor density of any substance and you are required to get the molecular formula, quickly go and obtain the relative molecular mass. Once you get the relative molecular mass, equate it to the relative molecular mass of the empirical formula times a certain unknown number, which I use small n there. Solve out whatever you have there, you get the value of that n, which is expected to be a whole number. Then, using that value of n, go back to the empirical formula, multiply each of the number of atoms in that empirical formula by that value of n you obtain. That's how we got C6. H what? 12. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please like and share this video to all the scholars, to your friends, to your classmates. If you're here to subscribe to the GMAT 41 YouTube channel, what is still holding you back? Remember from this channel, talk mathematics, talk physics, talk chemistry, we got you covered. Hit the subscription button, turn on the notification bell, Personalize the subscription so that once I upload a new content, you will be personally notified. What is the name of this compound, C6H12? How about you find out about it? Alright, C6 and H12. 
That's definitely a concept of an alkene. It's an organic compound. I guess it's xane anyway. All right? But you can learn that in our organic chemistry class. For now, what I want you to know, we've actually been able to deal with it. How to determine molecular formula from what? Using the knowledge of vapor density. It's all right. I'll be seeing you in our next video lesson where I'll be putting you through the concepts of further calculation on stoichiometry. Until then, remember to take your studies seriously.